Hello health champions. Today I'm going to talk about keto versus fasting. The ketogenic diet versus fasting or intermittent fasting. So in this video you'll learn how they are similar and how they are different so that you'll know how to pick one over the other or a combination of both so you can reach your health goals the fastest and in perfect health. Coming right up. The first thing they have in common is that they are very strict on carbohydrates. They restrict, they lower carbohydrates. So in the ketogenic diet, you will eat typically less than 30 grams of net carbs per day. And when you cut the carbohydrates that low, you will also dramatically lower insulin. So insulin is a fat storing hormone. It converts excess fuel into fat and it prevents the burning of stored fat for energy. Number three, when insulin goes down dramatically, therefore, then the body is allowed to start burning fat. When we reduce carbs dramatically, the body has to find an alternate source of fuel, namely fat, but it can't do that with a lot of insulin around. So all of these three things work together. Number four is ketones. Ketones is an alternate brain fuel and the ketones they result they're a, a byproduct of fat burning. So when the body learns to use fat for fuel there's a lot of ketones around and now they become the primary fuel for the brain. So in the absence of glucose, when we don't have a lot of carbs floating around in the system, then up to 75% of the fuel for the brain becomes ketones. Number five, ketones in the ketogenic diet, it reduces inflammation. Most inflammation is due to insulin and all of the factors associated with insulin and all the factors that promote metabolic syndrome and leads to cardiovascular disease and diabetes and strokes and so forth. So by reducing insulin dramatically we also reduce inflammation. Number six, they both increase mitochondria and mitochondria is the little powerhouse inside the cell. It what makes most of the energy that you have access to on a daily basis. And because mitochondria can only use oxygen and because fat can only be burned through oxygen, then when the body gets fat adapted, it's gonna upregulate the number of mitochondria. So you're gonna improve your ability to produce energy through the mitochondria. Number seven, glutathione is the body's own antioxidant. There is a lot of talk about eating antioxidants. We got to get the fruits and the vegetables and the plants and they have antioxidants and that can be beneficial, not necessarily for the antioxidants, but the only antioxidant that really truly matters is glutathione and the body can make it itself. It's our internal intracellular antioxidant and through a ketogenic diet or fasting, we're going to increase that production. Number eight, we have a decrease in cancer because cancer loves sugar and carbohydrates and cancer does comparatively better than the rest of the body cells when oxygen is low and glucose is high. So by changing all these previous seven factors then cancer is not going to thrive as much and the body has a much better chance of not feeding it and allowing the immune system to destroy it and clean it up. So all these eight factors are the same in keto versus fasting except that in fasting they happen more. Whatever keto benefits we get, we get more of them when we do the fasting. And why is that? Because Keto is a restriction in carbohydrates. Fasting is an elimination of carbohydrates. So if we think about this on a gradient as from a high carb, low fat diet might have 300 or more grams of sugar and carbohydrates. A Mediterranean diet might have 100 to 200. A paleo diet might have 70 to 100. 
low carb, high fat starts at about 50 to 70. And a ketogenic diet is anywhere from less 30 or less, so all the way down to, to 10 or even zero. But fasting is zero carbohydrates. We're not eating any carbohydrates. And not only are we restricting the carbs, but we're restricting all the nutrients. So if we compare the two, then the keto genic diet and the fasting, they are the closest together at the one end of, of this spectrum. So in that sense, they're very similar to each other. Fasting just takes it one step further. So those are the similarities. What are the differences? How do they differ? If fasting can do more, is there anything else that fasting exclusively does or that keto exclusively does? Well, there's something called autophagy. That means self-eating. And that only happens to any significant degree when we have extended fasts. When we go for a long period of time, usually 24 hours or more, even maybe 48 hours or more, then we're not adding any nutrients to the body. We're not adding any building materials or any energy substrate. So the body has to get really, really good at recycling and using the stuff that we have. So therefore, it upregulates the cleaning crew and it sends out all of these immune cells and all these different macrophages and they start recycling. And then once you start recycling, they also get better at repairing because all the tissues become more precious. So now we got to take care of everything because there's nothing new coming in. It also upregulates the production of stem cells. It upregulates the function of the immune system because that's part of the cleanup crew. And because we're not adding any protein either, protein becomes the most precious resource. We have typically enough fat that we can generate energy, but protein becomes very, very precious. And in order for us not to break down muscle, we have to get really good at recycling the protein, and therefore the body upregulates growth hormone. So an extended fast can upregulate growth hormone by as much as 2,000%. That makes sure that we use the protein that's available to the optimum degree and we maintain those muscles so there's a minimum of muscle wasting during a fast. So if fasting has all of those benefits, then why wouldn't we do it forever? Well, that's pretty obvious because if you don't eat, eventually you'll die you'll run out of fuel. So that's the limitation of fasting, that you can only fast as long as you have enough resources in the body, then the body sets that limit and you don't get healthier, you get sicker. That's the benefit of the ketogenic diet, because with the keto diet, you still get to eat. You still get to put enough fuel in the body to function. You're just not putting in the carbs to trigger the insulin. And when you can eat, you don't have a problem with hunger. As a matter of fact, hunger usually decreases when you don't have the blood sugar fluctuations. People typically notice that they get less hungry on the ketogenic diet, and that has two benefits. When you eat less, you tend to lose weight if that's your goal. But what I find is when you're less hungry, you don't have to eat so often. It saves a tremendous amount of time to only eat once or twice a day. And you don't have to worry about getting up in the morning and having breakfast every day. You just grab a cup of coffee or even a bottle of water and, and you're good because your body is fat adapted. Your hunger has gone down. Because you get to eat, the ketogenic diet is sustainable. If you wanted to, you could maintain it for months or years or even longer. Because you can eat and you can work out, you can continue, you can maintain your muscle or you can even build muscle while staying on a ketogenic diet. And if you have a highly active job or if you have hobbies that require a lot of physical activity and energy requirements, then you can still eat and supply those energy requirements. So these become 
obviously the, the drawbacks of the fasting, that it is not sustainable, that you will experience some hunger because you're not eating. It's typically not as bad as people think because your body sort of, you get hungry for a few minutes, you drink a cup of tea and then you're, you're good for half a day. So it's not as bad as people think, but you will have some hunger when you're fasting. It is not sustainable indefinitely, obviously, because at some point you run out of fuel. You cannot build muscle on autophagy because you're not adding any protein. With, with fasting and autophagy, the, the protein in the body is fixed. You will lose some because the recycling isn't 100% perfect, so you can't build muscle. And eventually, even though the autophagy and the high growth hormone will maintain muscle as much as possible, it will burn the fat first and spare the muscle. Eventually, if you go on a fast long enough, then there will be a certain percentage of protein that's lost and you're not adding any new, so you will lose some muscle. Also, if you require high activity, then fasting might be a little bit hard to do. That because the autophagy, the fasting is a little bit stressful, it's so focused on healing and recycling, it may not be able to generate a lot of energy in the long run for a physically demanding lifestyle. So that's how they are similar and that's how they're different. That's some advantages and drawbacks. So let's just kind of pull it together and consider who might want to use this and when. So the question is, if you're trying to lose weight, how much do you have left to lose? So if you have hundreds of pounds left, then no problem. You can go on quite a long fast. You can extend it for a good bit, 30 days and maybe more, or you can do the 30 days and then go keto intermittent fasting for a while and then do another 30 days. If you have to lot, a lot stored to burn, then you can do that. If you're thin, like myself, then you can't go very long. I still do a fast once in a while. I've done two fasts recently this year, uh, in the last year of four days, and that gives me a tremendous amount of autophagy. My ketones went sky high, and I get some of these benefits, but I can't go much longer because then I quickly start losing too much weight. So that's the main factor of how long you can go is how much do you have to lose. Next consideration is how insulin resistant are you? And you don't want to measure this by blood glucose. So some people who are type 2 diabetic, they push their body into that state for, for decades. They might have a glucose of 300 and still not be as insulin resistant as some people with a much lower glucose. Some people who are full-blown type 2 diabetics, they just cut out the soda and their body starts reversing because they, even though they had pushed their body quite far, they hadn't really sort of destroyed the body. They didn't have a predisposition for it necessarily. Whereas someone else who might have done ketones, might have been in ketosis for months or years and who for some reason cannot seem to lose a lot of weight, they might still have a lot of insulin resistance. And how do you figure this out? You do it by measuring fasting insulin, not the fasting glucose because glucose changes all the time. Fasting insulin is going to give you the best picture of how insulin resistant you are. Because if you cut back your carbs and your insulin stays high, then you're very insulin resistant. And if that's the case, then even if your blood sugar is normal, you might have to go for a good bit longer. You might have to go for a week or more before your body really makes a dent in that insulin level. Next consideration is how active are you? If your lifestyle requires a lot of physical activity, either through your job or through hobbies, then you may not be able to do a whole lot of fasting. But if, on the other hand, you have more of a desk job, a sedentary job, you don't have a whole lot of physical activities, you might 
do an occasional like very very brief hit exercise or just enjoy leisurely walks then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to fast quite extendedly because you even though you don't put a lot of calories in your body your mental focus is typically better on both keto and fasting than it is on most standard diets so a lot of people they start fasting or doing keto they'll actually notice better mental clarity better focus another consideration is how quickly do you want this to happen so just like we talked about fasting does basically everything keto does but it does it quicker so if you're in a hurry if you really really want this to happen quickly or if you just want to give yourself sort of a jump start if you're a type 2 diabetic and you want to get out of the starting blocks running then it might be a really good idea to start off with an extended fast maybe 7 10 14 days so how do you do the fasting how do you get into it well most of us already are fasting 12 hours every day if you have your last meal at 8 p.m and you eat breakfast at 8 then there is 12 hours during the night where you are fasting you're not putting anything caloric any nutrition into your body and then all you have to do is push your breakfast a couple of hours later and put your dinner a couple of hours earlier and you have gone to a 16 hour fasting window and that is how i would recommend for for most people to do this okay you start where you are and then you just nudge the borders you nudge the limits a little bit and you teach your body gradually to get used to it then you slowly become fat adapted you teach your body that there's a longer period without food and it figures out what to do then and then you can push this maybe all the way to 20 or 24 hours which is called one meal a day and a lot of people find it very convenient and very simple to do one meal a day and once your body has gotten to that point now you can try and skip a day so you do 36 hours and then 48 hours and so on and once you've tried that and you know what your body feels like how it reacts how you feel now you can go three four five days and you're going to be perfectly fine your body is going to be stable just pay attention just notice how you feel and if you don't feel good then eat something and if you notice that you can do several days and do fine or maybe even a week then if you're still feeling fantastic like a lot of people will at that point you could go up to 30 days i wouldn't recommend going very very long unless you have medical supervision someone who can monitor closely who has some experience with that but if you just increase it gradually and you pay attention to how you feel then you should be perfectly fine i would however strongly recommend with both a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting that you monitor that you measure your glucose and you measure your ketones so that you know where they are because glucose should go down and ketones should go up and if they don't if glucose goes down but you're not making any ketones there's something wrong all right so if you don't get these expected changes then you want to kind of back off and regroup and and try it again maybe consult with some people and see why aren't these changes happening so if you fit into one of these four if you have a lot to lose if you're very insulin resistant if you're very if you're not so active and if you want to lose it quickly then i would suggest that you experiment with some longer fasts if you don't have any of those four then you probably just want to do a combination of keto and intermittent fasting maybe throw in a two or three day fast a few times a year to get the autophagy benefits but you probably are going to find that the keto plus intermittent fasting is going to get you to your goals and you're going to find it a very comfortable very doable lifestyle if you enjoyed this video make sure you take a look at that one thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video